this week on the Danny Brown Show. So you play video games? Yeah. Which one? What, what you playing right now? I mean, I mainly play Fortnite. Oh my God! Yeah. I don't know if you even consider that playing video I mean, games. Uh, I ain't gonna. I don't know if this is white people shit. This might be just some weirdo shit. I mean, some people just care about the earth like that. But I don't know, motherfucker. That's a <laughs> man. That's just not what I'm trying to do, man. You ever been in a circle jerk? <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough. It's the Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye, ready now. Why your mates do the yows? It's the Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. It's the Danny Brown show. Sit back, relax your eye, ready now. Why your mates do the yows? It's the Danny Brown show. We about to get live. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, 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 what's up, yo? Coming to y'all live from Austin, Texas at Wild Mate Studios. It's the Danny Brown Show. I got the booth boys with me. You already know. What's up, fellas? What's up, man? What's up, Danny? How y'all doing today, man? Good. Chilling, man. Chilling. Yeah, man. Same here, man. We got no other than John from Portugal, the man in the house. How you doing, brother? I'm here. I'm doing it. Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for coming through, man. You were just at ACL this weekend, man. We just talking about that, man. How how was the crowd out here, man? Was it? It was it was cool. You know, I have to uh, point out that the VIP pit that sits in the front of mm. main stage mm. everywhere these days that shit's kind of crazy. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's like people that can afford that ticket don't mm-hmm. really. Yeah, that's. I be thinking they be up there being snobby and shit. That be yeah, the one not... motherfuckers that be chilling. You be thinking the people in the Gen Pop is the one that's gonna turn up the most, you know? That's but the VIP want. pit was going up. I mean, y'all was killing shit then. That's what that is. So you got the um, y'all just put out the new album, um, Chris Black, changed my life. Yeah, we put it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. yeah, man. One thing I can say about y'all, man, I um always just get like a hip hop feel from y'all shit, man. Like the way y'all incorporate the samples and shit like that, man. It's just really and then you like um you're an amazing songwriter, brother. I would definitely gotta give you your props on that, man. Cause um but I got a theory though. You know, motherfuckers that come from cold places and shit. Yeah. They always be able to lock in on that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in Alaska and shit. Like or that. even being in fucking Portland and shit, though. I feel like that's a place, too, that you can really... Because I don't know. It's like you be locked in. Like, you can really... Because me even being in Michigan, it's like you couldn't... You had to be trapped in for, like, at least two, three months out the year. And I would just be in my career writing and shit, working on music. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Man, that's so funny. So, like, I grew up in Alaska. Uh, parents were dog sled mushers. Which is crazy to me yeah so we like lived in cabins growing up and my dad had moved up in 71 our whole record collection was pretty much pre-70s so growing up out there like it's all we did was listen to motown like mm-hmm. we just listened to music constantly motown shit though yeah it was like motown i mean it was we had like all these radio it was like the one station we could get and it's just all we we listened to growing up so it was like motown you know sam cook uh, Beatles, obviously, mm-hmm. Rolling Stones, stuff like that. Dope. That's dope as fuck, man. So, with the new album and shit, man, what, what was the um, process like recording this like? Uh, I mean, dude, it was pretty intense. Yeah. I, I, honestly, um, our buddy Chris Black, who the album is named after, mm-hmm. he had started touring with us years ago. He was just like our, our funny friend who mm-hmm. would who'd come out and he would crack jokes. And we're all like introverts. I mean, again, like, I, I grew up in the woods yeah i'm not really like looking to be on stage and be the center of attention chris would come out he was like my security blanket like that dude would come out and he would dance and kind of crack jokes and take the attention off of us like kind of brought the band back together at a point where i mean it just felt like we needed somebody like that in the crew and uh he sadly passed in uh 2019 and it was in the middle of this process. We had just started with Basker. Mm. So we were working with Jeff Basker, who is like, I mean, beyond incredible. I don't know if you've been around that dude, but no. he is, I mean, that is as good as you can be mm-hmm. at, at music. And we had started working with him. And uh, yeah, just everything kept throwing a, a wrench in the, the process. Oh, you know, like Chris passing was pretty heavy for all of us. And then the pandemic happened. Oh shit! Uh, I broke my jaw. How did you do? How did how did happen? It's, so, um, yeah, I guess it was a prior break. 
just growing up in Alaska. You just had a broken jaw and just never know? Like I, I didn't know, man. I didn't know. But pressure built up over time. And just one day, yeah, I got this, like, we were up in Alaska. We were doing this AFN, uh, Alaskan Federation of Natives conference. And I just had this big pop. And my jaw was just like, I mean, it was just like massive pain. Fuck. And I went in and the doctor said, like, like, okay, so you broke your jaw. When did you break your jaw? And, I, and I'm like, I don't know, like three days ago. And he says, no, there's like, there's a break from when you were younger. You broke it in high school. Oh, shit. And yeah, I had no idea. But over the years, I mean, singing every single yeah, day. Yeah, that's what I'm like. You didn't never like, <laughs> no pain or nothing. It just was broke and shit. No, that's what's, that's what's fucking weird about it. I, I have this, this thing now because I, I was in pain for such a long time. I can't really tell when it's hurting. But I'll get like migraines or like, oh, yeah. like what would happen, happen during the pandemic is like I would just split teeth. I, I like split a few teeth during the pandemic. What the fuck? Uh, just the pressure building up. But uh, we were heading towards this like super intense surgery. Like they take off your jaw and they remove these mandibles and they, they put in titanium. So like I, I did PT for like a year uh, just trying to get this like my jaw stable. So even that put a like put the album on hold for a minute. Dude, I could I couldn't do anything. Oh shit! But there was a point when I finally started being able to sing again, where I just went back in and just kind of sang about everything that had been happening during this period. Oh shit! But I mean, there's a couple songs on the record too, like "Summer of Love" and uh, the the last track, "Anxiety." Like these are two songs that I was like singing. I mean, I was like just like singing through my teeth, oh, trying shit. to get it out. Damn, man. So what's the um the song process like? Are you like going into like the production shit first, or did you get like inspired and like write the songs first and didn't figure it out and a lot of post shit? Well, working with Ace, so like I work with Asa Tacconi mm -hmm. from Electric Guest. Uh, he is he's just like one of those people who's really great at like he just creates that space for you. Like he could be like vulnerable, talk about things that you probably wouldn't talk about in front of other people. I do it in song most of the time. I just put it in fucking songs. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. So I, I went in with Asa. We started writing songs. Uh, a lot of this stuff is just Basker. Like Jeff Basker is such an amazing musician and mm -hmm. producer. Um, we just go in and he's so funny, man. Like you would say things to him like, like I'm, I'm thinking like maybe I'll do like this Willie Nelson type thing. And mm -hmm. you would sing something to Basker and it's so annoying because he's so good. He would say things like, yo, that's not Willie. This is Willie. <laughs> and he would like sing something and you'd be, you know, wildly impressed. Because even like um, um, the, the single y'all had put out, Dummy, like that shit, that, that, I don't know, it just give me like a, like a Dilla vibe or some shit. It's not too far off of something that he would do, you know what I'm saying? Like, cool. so I always like, I always love when people could like genre bend in some sense. Like it give me like feelings of like, oh shit, because I kind of like do the same thing. I can hear like a fucking... I don't know, a fucking jazz song or some shit and try to incorporate into my shit in, in, instead of just being influenced from rap. You know what I'm saying? I could take influence and get inspiration out of anything, man. So I would get kudos to y'all, man, for doing that shit, man, because y'all be killing that shit, dog. Yeah, I love how you do, man. Like That's really cool to hear. Oh, thank you, brother. And I was like, I was just telling you, man, I, I'm pretty sure like a lot of motherfuckers, FIFA, <laughs> like, y'all kill, kill every fucking FIFA fucking soundtrack, man, but shit, man. All right, man, we'll jump into some of these Axe Dannys, man. You can always hit me up at Axe Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. That's Danny at the Danny Brown Show dot com. First up, we got Walgreens photo. Axe Danny. What's up, Danny? In 2013, I was a concert photographer and I worked at Walgreens running a photo lab. My boss asked if we can use my photo as a display, so I chose this photo of you. I took the photo at First Avenue when you played a show with Action Bronson. How do you feel about this? Touch my Coranta through the fence. Heavy neck. I don't know. I'm not like a fucking model type of looking motherfucker, man. But um, shouts out to you for doing that. You ever played First Avenue? Uh, yeah, of course. That was the um the venue. I always that's like one of my favorite venues to play because of Purple Rain and shit. Yeah, I was, look, I got a French shirt on today. God <laughs> damn, went. that came together right there, man. But yeah, man, because my mom used to fucking watch Purple Rain every fucking day. It was, and I I feel like she used to watch it more so because she would put it on and be like cleaning the house and shit. So I think she was just listening to the music and shit. But me, I was just trying to see Apollonia jump in the water with my little, <laughs> yeah. my little freaky ass. That's my favorite part. But yeah, man, Prince is like a fucking um. It was crazy, man, when, when, when Prince passed, man, 
it was like so many people like like I don't I mean even for you guys like like do you record like a lot of songs when you're making the albums and shit? Yeah. And then like cuz cuz you got like a lot of shit just sitting around and shit. Like me I I, I probably record about like mm, roughly 30 some songs something like that. And then I I would just dwindle down but as soon as he passed like the next day so much of these Prince songs just popped up on YouTube. It was almost like a Prince fan field day, man. Like I was just like, god, how much shit do he got, man? Like and then just the way he would pop up and he'll just fucking just show up at any like small venue, like do real intimate sets and play for like fucking three hours and do shit like that, man. I like that's some motherfucker that love music. So shouts out to Prince, man. I hate Percocets and shit. But that's the boy. <laughs> but that's my boy, man. I swear, man. What were you more of a, a Prince guy or a Michael Jackson guy? Oh, I'm Michael Jackson. But... I see I can't never really hate on either either one. Like I hate <laughs> when people always try to put them up against each other and shit because they both got they you know what i'm saying it depends on like like once michael got into his bad shit you know when he started being on his rock shit i can kind of understand where certain people would fell off and you know but prince he always just been that shit from the beginning you know yeah you, so i never listened to prince growing up mm -hmm. so i i miss like this whole era i've recently i mean i guess in the last few years like i love that song paisley park hell yeah oh, and that song is so great and just as a guitarist mm -hmm. i prince to me is probably all-time great guitarist i'm a, yeah definitely I, i'm only reason why i'm, I'm gonna say i'm a more of a michael jackson guy because he ain't make bad dance and bad dance was fucking <laughs> i don't know what the fuck <laughs> prince was thinking about man i know he had a good t it seems like he had a great time shooting that video but fucking bad dance was horrible all right next up brother go bye bye Hey, Danny. <laughs> you remember Bad Dance? Yeah, of course. <laughs> My brother got caught with a gun recently and is looking at a solid amount of jail time. I'm really close to him and I'm finding it hard to find any words of encouragement other than the obvious. Stop being a dumbass. Is there anything I can say or do to help lift his spirits up? Also, do you have any crazy prison stories? I remember you saying you had a stint in jail. Yeah, I went to jail, not prison. It's, it's two different things, man. Love the pie. Keep doing your damn thing, Nick. No, your brother's a fucking jackass, man. Anybody just running around with a gun. Ain't nothing you can do for him when you go to jail and shit is fucking just write him. You know, motherfuckers really love them letters and shit. Send them some pictures or some shit. But I don't know. Depending on where you at, man, Um, you know, gun laws are different states. Some are stricter than others, man. So... I don't know. He might be going down for for a long time, or sometimes you know you get caught with a gun, your first offense or something. They might just give him probation. But I don't know the situation, man. Are you a gun guy? Being from Alaska and shit, y'all don't do no hunting and shit. Yeah, we have guns. Yeah, uh, definitely y'all had guns <laughs> and shit. Guns. Yeah, I mean we grew up with guns. I actually have uh, a little anecdote yeah. about hunting. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, growing up in Alaska, it, everybody thinks we were hunters. Yeah, that, and I'm sorry if I if I did a stereotype there, but. Well, it's interesting, dude. I grew up thinking that we all hunt, mm -hmm. you know, like everybody I knew, like, I mean, up until I was six years old, I remember going to like kindergarten and just running into kids who go hunting with their parents. Yeah. You know, everybody goes hunting with their dads. So I've never been hunting. I've been taught how to shoot. I carry guns around. Uh, we're out in the woods. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're kids, but we're, we have bears, we have moose, yeah, things definitely. around. So this one day, it I mean, it's such a, a wild thing for my dad to do, but my dad's home one day, and we're sitting there eating lunch, and we look out the window, and this moose walks by. But my dad moose. turns to me, he says, hey, you want to go hunting? Mm. And I go, yeah, of course. I, you know, this is crazy for me. Like, all of my friends go hunting. I've never been hunting. Yeah. You've shown me all this stuff. Let's go do it. Go get my snowsuit on. Get all ready to go out there. My dad's getting his gun. He's all ready. We go out, we track down this moose. And I mean, this is the type of place Alaska is. Like a moose walks by. Yeah. And you tra you track it down. How do you track it down though? I, I mean, mean, we just follow the tracks. The, the yeah. tracks. Yeah. So we, tra we track it out into the woods. And we're close to this moose. And the thing that people outside of states with moose don't understand, like these are dangerous animals. Yeah, moose like, will fuck it, you up. It's super aggressive. <laughs> like they're fucking pissed. Like the second they see you, they're angry. So... We get close to this moose, and I'm sitting there. I'm really nervous, and my dad says, "Hey, are you ready? Mm. Are you ready? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the moose. Do you want to get the moose?" And I nod to him, and I'm looking at the moose. Eye to eye, just, just looking <laughs> at moose eyes. At the, I'm at the moose. <laughs> and my dad, he's sitting there, and there's no shot. I look back at my dad, and he goes, "Are you sure you want me to get the moose?" And I nod to him again. I look, no shot. Again, looking back at my dad. 
hey, Johnny, are you sure you want to get the moose? <laughs> you know, and I'm really, I'm just confused. I'm just a kid, so I'm, I'm looking at I'm confused. And he puts down the rifle and he says, you know what, we're not going to get the moose. All right. And he starts walking me back and he says, you know why? We don't need it. Mm-hmm. If you ever need that moose, it will be here. Yeah. And he was kind of teaching me a lesson about, like, we can afford food right now. Like, if there's a day, ever a time when you can't get food, that moose will be here waiting for you. Damn, y'all be eating moose and shit? <laughs> yeah, we eat moose. <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind Bear. of... How does moose taste? Uh, moose is pretty gamey. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I kind of, I'm kind of down with the gamey meats and shit. Oh, yeah, gamey I'm meats a nasty good. motherfucker, man. I, I fuck with the gamey meats, man. Like, the venison and all that shit, man. That shit is... Do some muck tuck. What's that? That's whale. Well, no, nah, that's a little crazy. It ain't that you many. You do that. I mean, I, I, I do it for the story, but I, that ain't, you know, if I see it on the menu, that ain't my first go to. I'm going to still pick the chicken. You know what I'm saying? I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Bosmus from our friends over at Manscape. The holidays are approaching, but what if I told you that the celebration are starting early this year? Keep calm and let your balls jingle this season with Manscaped's brand new performance package 5.0 Ultra featuring a new lawnmower 5.0. Watch all your wishes and mistletoe kisses come true. Look nice when you're going naughty by going to manscaped.com and use code DannyB for 20% off plus free shipping. Unwrap the gift of smoothness this season with Manscaped. One thing I really love about Manscaped is how easy it is to use and they always come with great products that make you smell nice and good downstairs. Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle for the man who deserves it all. Included is the special sack in the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer, Manscaped's Liquid Formations, and two free gifts. Get 20% off free shipping with the code DannyB at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com and use code DannyB. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. You go back to uh, Alaska often? Yeah, of course. I mean, we were back a bunch this year. We shot a bunch of videos up there. Mm-hmm. And dude, I mean, it was fucking crazy. It was so unexpected. I mean, it hasn't been snowing in Alaska. Like, it's, there's just barely been any snow the last few years. And then just out of nowhere, where we were shooting our videos, like, two and three feet oh, every shit. single time I came back. Oh, shit. But the sickest shit is, do, do you ride snow machines? Snowmobiles? No, snowmobiles. But I remember as a kid, um, all the drug dealers had them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all like the balling drug dealers in my hood, they all had snowmobiles and shit. But it's like a big thing in like the Upper Peninsula and shit. Uh, dude, the new, the new sleds are so sick. Oh, like, shit. It's crazy. Like super lightweight. Lots of power. Mm-hmm. Really fun. Yeah. So we're going to go up there. You're going to come up with I'm us. I'm down. I, w- I actually <laughs> had right before tuck. the fucking um, pandemic and all that shit happened, I had a show in Alaska. I've never been up there. And I was kind of excited to go, man, even though, you know, it's cold and shit. But I just always, I don't know. I, I, I remember watching um like an old, um, I can't remember. Was it Rap City or some some one of those? But they had like, um, they had like a whole like, um, like a hip hop scene in Alaska and shit, man. I just wanted to go check shit out, man. I remember it was a rapper. I think his name was Joker. Joker, Bail Bondsman. Yeah, yeah. Joker the Bail Bondsman. <laughs> <laughs> he used to always have his videos come on in. I was like, man, I don't know. Alaska look kind of tight, man. But yeah, I wanted, I was I was excited to go up there. I think I was playing a college or something up there. I think in Juneau, maybe. But I don't know, man. Whoa, that's sick. I've never been to Juneau. Oh, shit. So where are you um, at in Alaska? Oh, so we're like interior. I grew up in a place called Kinnick outside of Wasilla. It's just north of Anchorage. 40, 40 miles, and then uh, up in Healy, outside of Denali. Okay. But, uh, you know, Alaska's just, I'm very intrigued by places in America that doesn't seem like, you know, like, it's just like, it's like its own world up there, you know? Like, the whole culture and everything and shit. Yeah, man, I mean, it fucking is. Like, it, it is by far the most beautiful place I've ever been and most unique I mean, when I go back back home, I've I've been gone a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, just we've toured for forever. Yeah. And every time I go back home, that's home. There's no place like Alaska. Yeah. All right. Next up, we got cassette tapes. Hey, Danny, very excited for Kawanta to drop. Scaring the hoes, the only cassette I own. That's considered a Danny Brown project. I would love to have hot soup all the way. All right, this motherfucker asked me, am I gonna make a tape? No, man, I'm not making a fucking tape, man. Even though I do have a um a huge collection of um tapes and um 
And I was just collecting tapes because, you know, we in hip hop and shit, sampling and shit, most, you know, you use vinyl and shit. And I was like, man, maybe we start getting some tapes because it's easy to pack. And I would have these fucking, like, I remember my old house, man, I was collecting vinyl and so much. And it would just take up so much fucking room, you know? So I was like, man, maybe get, because you can get all that shit on tapes as well. I was like, man, tapes, I can, you know, store them better and have tapes and shit. But I didn't realize how hard it is to sample from tapes, man. My fucking fingers was fucking getting raw from <laughs> rewinding and forwarding and going back. You know, when you got the vinyl, you could just run it back and do shit like that. I'm like, oh, I don't know if this tape process is going to really work out. But I like the sounds that tapes give. They got this warm, fuzzy feeling to them. And, that you know, they got a nice little warble to them sometimes. But no, it didn't work out. But no, I'm not putting any tapes out, man. I feel like tapes is like a, a novelty thing right now to release. Put out the fucking tapes, dude. You ever put out a tape? Yeah, people are asking. No, fuck yeah, that. I ain't put, put out no put fucking out tape. tape, man. I used to. Uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, it's like a good merch thing, you know, but no, nah, I mean, I put out a vinyl, you know. I mean, that's more of a collector's thing, man. Tapes, man. I remember, man, motherfuckers used to steal your tapes. You could just put the motherfuckers in your pocket, man. You know how many times motherfuckers have stole a tape from me, man? That shit sucked, man. All right, next up we got um white people shit. White people shit. We always um talk about white people shit here. Good. You know, what I'm saying? I got a lot. And of I know it. in Alaska, I'm hearing about the <laughs> the dog sleds and shit, man, and fucking eating whales and shit. It definitely sounds like you definitely know a lot about some white people shit. <laughs> so <laughs> we got Rock Tumblr. Hey, Danny, I've been listening to your show recently, and I've been wondering if you think tumbling rocks is white people shit. It's basically where you put rocks. It's basically where people put rocks they find in a tumbler with some kind of cleaner and polish and make them look all shiny after. Let me know what you think. Would you tumble some rocks? Best regards. Duke Sunyard. Um, I ain't gonna, I don't know if this is white people shit. This might be just some weirdo shit. I mean, some people just care about the earth like that. But I don't know if motherfucker that's a... <laughs> tumble rocks? I mean, collecting rocks and shit. You just see a rock and be like, oh shit, I would love to see what that motherfucker look like cleaned up. You know what I'm saying? Like, that never came across my own thoughts, you know? I mean, I remember just being a kid and the motherfucker that came in from recess and he had a bunch of rocks in his pocket. He got sent to the slow class. So I never really was a motherfucker that wanted to... Uh, Collect rocks and shit. You know about this rock tumbling thing? I, I know of rock tumbling. Yes. <laughs> See, yeah. That's never been nothing. That never been on my radar. So motherfuckers just get. I mean, I, I don't. I, I don't see the. Um, I don't know the end game in this. Like, I mean, obviously they have a nice shiny rock, but um, like, w what's the fun in this? <laughs> I want to clean my rocks up and shit. Yeah, that's um no, that's not something I'm gonna do. I mean, I got I'm I, I got too much. To, they make video games and shit. We got social media. It's all type of cool internet shit going on now that I, I can spend my time with. Then um, I mean, I guess you won with the herb. This is definitely some toe ring bitch kind of <laughs> shit. <laughs> all the bitches with toe rings, man. They be having a bunch of rocks in their sinks and shit. All right. <laughs> I can see that. But yeah, man, I'm not up on um no um rock tumbling, man. So what was um like yeah. All right, I'm lost. I I'll, I'll, I'll jump yeah. to some <laughs> I'll jump to some would you rather's, man. I'm, I'm my mind is blown right now. All right, circle jerk. Would you rather? Hey Danny, question. You and four homies locked in a room and the only way out is to jerk off in a circle. But one of you has to sit it out even though he still has to be in the room as some sort of passive bystander. Would you rather be the guy sitting out or join in on a session? Keep it up. The podcast is amazing. Brian from Denmark. I'm definitely joining in a session. I ain't about to catch no friendly fire. I'm the one shooting off, man. I'm not about to watch a bunch of motherfuckers <laughs> bust a nut, and I ain't about to get in on the action. That's not something I'm down with, man. That's just not what I'm trying to do, man. You ever been in a circle, jerk? <laughs> 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 Oddly enough, I was in a conversation about this last night. Really? Yeah. And and our buddy sat it out. Oh, he sat it out? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I can. <laughs> I'm going to have to join in on you the phone. You need a good ref. Nah, that's <laughs> crazy, man. Just imagine you be the one sitting it out and you just catch the friendly fire. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not done with they're that. They're not looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Shit, shit splatters everywhere, man. All right, man. You catch one of them ropes to the eyes. All right. Cool guest or collab. Hey, Danny, would you rather do a podcast episode with Patricia O'Neill as a guest or do a collaborative EP with MF Doom? Big fan from Nairobi, Kenya. Shout out, Peter. I definitely would rather do a podcast with um, Patricia O'Neill because I don't want to have to fucking rap with MF Doom, man. That's like one of the fucking best rappers in the world. Can you imagine what my brain would be going through trying to fucking figure out some shit to fucking 
rap with this motherfucker. Like even you, you were just talking about um, y'all did some shit with um Black Thought, and just like just next level rapping motherfuckers, man. Where you like, man, that shit just boggles my mind. Like I can rap and shit, but I ain't that. Like where you be like, you hear these motherfuckers like, I, I'm good, but I ain't that good. You know what I'm saying? So no, I don't want to be. I don't want to. I, I I like my life. And I'm having a good time. <laughs> I don't want to get depressed, like trying to record with somebody, man. Yeah, walking into the studio and thinking, say something smart. Yeah, you know, <laughs> not the best way to make music. So, what was it like working with on Black Thought? Uh, he kind of fucked me up, if I'm being honest. I mean, we did so we did a few songs together. We had been sitting with Sean C. and uh, working on music in Portland, and Tariq is coming out, so. He flies out one night. He's on a red eye. See, he's he's fucking tired when he shows up. And to Portland. To Portland, and we're working at Sandy Bodecker's studio. It's just, I mean, it's such a sick place. And we're in there, and he sits down on the couch, and he's like, "Let me hear what you're working on." And we start playing through the songs, and he's he's sitting there, he's texting the whole time. He's like <laughs> listening to music, and he's just like, "Next song, next song." He's texting. And I was sitting there like, holy shit, like we just put in all this work and he is, he's not feeling it, you know? And he's sitting there and after like 25 minutes of like going through the songs, he's like, go back to the first one. Okay, is, is the mic ready? Oh shit. And, and like, oh, it's right over here. Like show, show him in. He goes in and start to finish in the entire song. And the thing is, the thing that fucked us up was he left his phone out there with us. Mm -hmm. He had been writing lyrics oh, yeah. the whole time. <laughs> and he had already committed it to memory. God and damn. dude, when he went in, he goes, he goes through the entire song, start to finish, gets to the end, and he goes, Hey, about two minutes and, and 40 seconds, I said, The authority is historically bankrupt. Could you put me in there? Punch me in right there. What the fuck? And Trump punches him in. And again, he just calls out another time and like where he should be in the song, delivers the rest of the song, and that was it. God damn he it, was, man. He was done. And, and I mean, that happened to us a couple of times with him. He came out, he freestyled with us. Oh, shit. And, went, and it was just like, hey, is the studio open? Went into the studio and just delivered his freestyle. freestyle. Like at a show? Freestyle at a show. Oh, shit. Yeah, we did like a, a march, for, march for our lives. We were doing, like, kids were marching against gun violence in the city, and uh, he was staying up the street. He, dude, he popped out and like showed up for the kids, which was sick as fuck yeah, anyway. But yeah, he remembered his freestyle, went, went back in and did that. There's no way, like my brain does not work like that. Fuck no, mine don't either, man. I think I destroyed my shit with all the fucking drugs <laughs> and shit. But that, that shit do give me hope, like, like with rapping and shit. Or just making music in general is like, man, I mean, you know, some people... They feel like the older you get, you might lose a step or something like that. But when I see rappers like Black Thought or even like Doom, like as time went on and went on, like these motherfuckers get better with age type shit. So I just really hope and pray to the heavens that I'm 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 lucky enough to be one of those guys that can fucking age well with it, man. Cause I wouldn't want to be fucking going toe to toe with fucking Black Thought. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit is fuck no. I'm cool on that one, man. <laughs> All right, next up we got. Chocolate treats. Hi, Danny. Would you rather eat poo poo flavored chocolate or chocolate flavored poo poo? Much love all the way from Albertine, Scotland. Your pal. You're not my pal. <laughs> to think of some shit like this. Um, definitely chocolate flavored poo poo. I mean, I don't. I mean, regardless of what it looked like, you know. Just, yeah. Interesting. Why are you thinking about eating poo poo though, man? You are you okay? Do you need some help? Do you need someone to talk to? Um, you can. I mean, DM me or something, man. It seems like you got some shit going on. I mean, um. <laughs> Wait, have you, have, you, have you ever done like the Jelly Belly, like uh, yeah, the man. booger flavor? Yeah, and... I've done that shit, man. And it's not a good time. It's not a good time. But I feel like I would prefer if one of them was poop flavored. Yeah. <laughs> then, then... Instead of eating poop yeah i mean but i mean i don't care what it look like it's a lot of food that look fucked up that tastes good you know what i'm saying so the actual <laughs> the aesthetic of it is not you know that's not going to fucking turn me off i mean but eating <laughs> Damn. shit man you know what i'm saying that shit that, once once you bust that motherfucker open man that shit that's when they really get to the real deal of it you know that's what that shit that shit fucking comes out like you have a fucking cut a turd in half <laughs> 
That motherfucker, you start seeing smoke coming out and shit like that, man. It should be just, it already, it's already banging just regular. But once you split that shit down the middle, man, yeah, the poop knife. Yeah, these motherfuckers told me about the poop knife the other day, man. Well, a few episodes ago, man. You ever heard of a poop knife? I have heard of a See, poop this is some real white people shit. I didn't even know about it. That shit existed, man. Like, what kind of, what kind of monster dumps is motherfucker taking where they need to cut this shit up, man? I mean, you know, I, I guess it's just based on where you live. Some some people got different motherfucking toilet situations and shit, and you know, shit ain't flushing right. You know, thank I God have... in Texas, man, we got a strong flow. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't know if I ever need a poop knife, man. But no, I'm, I'm not copping this, man. Can you imagine seeing that on on on, on, a, on a motherfucking Amazon shit? Like, nigga, you bought a poop knife? Like, what the fuck? You need some fiber in your diet, man. Like, you gotta shit ain't going right, man, in your life, man. Well, you gotta buy a poop knife, man. But nah, man, I'm I'm cool on that. All right, man, let's spin the wheel. We'll get ready. <laughs> we'll get ready to get up out of here. Travis Kelsey, are you a football fan? No, not really much in the sports. Yeah, I've been a football fan because I've been um well I've been watch I'm not really I can say you know I play you know Madden or but I've been betting on football this year and um so I've been watching a lot of football but I mean I guess everybody talking about Travis Kelsey because he's dating Taylor Swift now which is kind of crazy to me man it just lets you know man like once you just like get with a high profile how much shit just changed like now he's they talking about this motherfucker on like fucking women talk shows and shit like that you know but I I don't know man if I could ever be like that i i, I don't want to be like known for who i'm dating and shit like that like i want to i like to keep my shit private you know like so that i'm pretty sure that's hard for him but travis kelsey he seems like a cool enough guy you know like he, he looks great yeah motherfucker i mean shit motherfucking muscles and shit man he got a fucking <laughs> football man it's it's a um, dangerous sport man but yeah i've been watching more football this year man um kind of i kind of did good on monday so I, I i wanted to talk some shit about how much money i've been losing but i kind of did pretty good this monday man wait do you do fantasy yeah i mean you know just betting and shit i mean not betting you know but you know a couple well, uh, doing a little waging doing a little waging man I, i'm like my girl she's really she's really worried about me because she's seen how happy i was this this week and she's like don't let this be a <laughs> don't let this be a a thing because you know me and and my sobriety and all that shit now. She's like, you just going to change an addiction for another addiction. And, I, and I've, I I definitely know gambling is an addiction. You know, I've, I've seen my grandma's and, you know, when, when Detroit first introduced casinos, the, the everything just changed in the entire city, man. So you're not a gambling person at all? Never, like, go to Vegas and play some slots and shit like that? No, nah, man. I've, I see. I always bet. Th that's what music is to me. Like music is that gamble. Yeah. That's like, I'm like, Yo, you're it. right. Let's go. Let's I'm just definitely betting loss a few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that hurts more than fucking losing money, man. When you be like, this shit's gonna work. This shit's gonna work. Like, nah, it ain't work. It's cool. But no, one thing um I do like, man, about music, man, is just when the risk does pay off. You know, like um. Cause it's it's like I said, um, I've got this new album coming out, and I, I'm definitely starting to get the anxiety. And I thought I was good, man. I'm like, cause the last few albums, man, I but I was drinking shit. I was, I was, you know, I was I was hiding my emotions with other things. Now I ain't got nothing to turn to. It's just me, you know. And last night I was in bed, and I guess you know, put the new single out and shit, and it just was just laying in bed, and I was just like, fuck. I hope people like this shit, man. Which shouldn't even be like a thought. I feel like you know, but. I don't know, man. We still human beings at the end of the day, man. Did that ever get to you too, though? Like releasing a new album and just get the jitters and shit. Like, yeah, of course. Dude, I mean, it's it's the weirdest thing that you put something out that is just immediately judged. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way it's been. I just, it's always been like that. Yeah. Like you kind of just get judged. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think that's part of like what you what you do. You kind of go and you just make the shit that you want to make. Mm -hmm. Gamble, roll the dice. <laughs> Yeah, you just gotta exactly. gamble and roll the dice and hope shit works out, man. But yeah, man, I um yeah, I, I've I've been getting the anxiety, man. But I, I don't know, man. I, I I'm real confident in it, you know. Like I'm I'm happy with the product I made. I had a lot of time. Like I've actually was making it during the pandemic as well and shit. So I've had a lot of time to sit on it, and you know, I'm 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 happy with what I, what I, what I made and shit. But I don't know. I'm just if anything, I'm probably you know excitement and 
that could be a little anxiety. So anything I'm probably excited more so than like scared of, you know, what people are going to think about. I'm just probably more excited to get it out and get back on the road and shit and having fun with that. Cause, um, like just doing this last tour, man, um, this is my first tour I done sober and shit. And it was like being on stage became like a therapy thing for me. Like I was happy. Like it was fun just to see the people that enjoy the music and shit where before I used to be like, let me just get this shit over with kind of, you know? So I was just happy just to see the people to do, enjoy the shit I make. And I was just getting like a high from that almost, man. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you can, you know what I mean? Cause you get like this adrenaline rush when you get off stage. And it's almost one of those kind of things where I'm like, fuck, well, what did I used to do to calm myself down? And like, motherfucker used to be getting fucked up and shit like yeah. that. And now I just like. I mean, what? that's the weirdest thing about playing music. Like you're kind of almost like force fed that. Mm -hmm. Like you, you kind of like show up and it's like, here's the drink. Here's, yeah. here's everything. Honestly, for me, like, I, I'm pretty much a natural introvert. I mm -hmm. want to play video games. Like, I want to be in my room. I want to mm -hmm. be with my family. I want to be at home. The thing that I love about music is being there with people who are there for the same thing. Yeah. Like, I love I love being, like, an, like, a bedroom artist who goes out and there's a lot of people in my bedroom. Yeah. And, like, this is so fucking cool. Like, we're here, like, experiencing this together. That's always been fun for me. I mean, I used to play like f with my back to the audience. I would oh just, shit! <laughs> dude, I, I can't really handle. I don't look at audiences. Like I don't. Really I used to just keep my that. eyes closed. I would just close my eyes and just, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, I think that's one of the processes I love about making music the most. Is like I'm the first to hear it type shit. Like you motherfuckers just don't know. Yeah. I got some shit <laughs> and be in my room just listening to the shit, jamming out to the shit by myself. So you play video games? Yeah. Which one? What, what you playing right now? I mean, I mainly play Fortnite. Oh my God! Yeah. I don't know if you would even consider that playing video I mean, games. That, God damn it! I like Fortnite. playing with my squad, dude. Oh shit, man! <laughs> Fuck. I have friends. Yeah. I have friends. I don't. I don't. God damn it, Fortnite! I mean, um, I have Fortnite because um, my girl nieces they come over. They like to play Fortnite, man. Fortnite is just one of those games where when it first came, it just took the world by storm. Kind of, it was like I remember motherfuckers coming to me like, man. You play Fortnite, you play Fortnite, and then I was like, I, I tried it out, but it was like, I, I was maybe too far back from the curve already, you know, like motherfuckers just building shit, like, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I couldn't catch up to this shit, man, I was like, alright, man, it's certain games that have come out, man, and I feel like if you don't get to jump on it, and you don't play it first, the fucking, the competition just get too high, man, and you can't even have a good time with the shit, you know? And Fortnite is one of those games for me. Right now, I'm, um, oh, I, oh, Cyberpunk released a new DLC, so I've been I've been getting my cyberpunk on, which I love, man. Really? Yeah, cyberpunk is great, man. I know a lot of people talk shit about it, but I've been a cyberpunk supporter since day one. Motherfuckers know I ain't, I ain't capping. I've been telling these motherfuckers <laughs> cyberpunk is a beast. Now everybody's coming around the corner and being like, oh, cyberpunk is good. But no, cyberpunk is great, man. I really love it, man. So, all right, man. We'll get, let's spend a wheel one more time. We'll get out of here because that Travis Kelsey shit wasn't. I ain't get my. I didn't really get my. You know what I'm saying? Pretty sure you know about you know about ice fishing. Huh? <laughs> I know about ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> ice fishing, which you know, it, to me, it looks like a good time. Uh yeah, I mean, it's a good time. Drill a hole in the ice. Yeah. Pull up a fish. Mm-hmm. What kind <laughs> of? <laughs> that, that's essentially it. I mean, I mean, but what is the uh, appeal of it? Like, I never really like. I I think typically it's subsistence. Like it's it's to feed people. I mean, yeah, of course right? that, but I mean, like, is it like a different type of fish that live under ice and shit, or is it like... Whoa, that's a crazy question. Oh, it's just fish, <laughs> fish just live. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ain't no catfish under the ice, the motherfuckers, I know they like niggas. The motherfuckers, in, they only in hot water only, you know what I'm saying? Damn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, it's, it, I mean, I don't know. Is it different type of fish that live on the ice, man? I don't know. Is yeah, I mean, fish... there's like lake trout. There's okay. there's different things. I mean, when you go out, so uh, you go out to like villages, mm -hmm. and you'll have like seal live live under the ice. I mean, that's not ice fishing, yeah. but there's there's seals. There's there, that's where you get your food. What kind of fish is under the ice? That's what I'm saying, man. I feel like the appeal of that would be like you can only get a certain type of fish. <laughs> 
That's under the bus. I guess. That, I mean, I'm. I'm I'm a nigga, man. I don't know, man. It might be dope. I, I love this question. <laughs> <laughs> Goldfish live under ice? Yeah, that's why every time you buy one and you put that motherfucker in there, they just die. They be like, nigga, I ain't supposed to live in no fucking <laughs> small-ass bowl. All right, man. Well, I guess. All right. Thank you for coming through, brother. <laughs> we about to get at this motherfucker. Yeah, thank you so much, man. The new album is great, man. Fucking man, it was a um, it was an honor to work with you too on that fucking um, the Evil Friends shit, man. And that was um, yeah, man, that was great, man. But um, yeah, so we about this motherfucker, man. Shouts out to y'all. See me same time, same channel. You already know what it is. Shouts out Portugal, the man, my boy John up in the house. We see y'all, motherfuckers. We out.